Mr. Beat presents Supreme Court Briefs. Arkansas, November 3rd, 1992. Citizens vote to approve Amendment 73 to the Arkansas Constitution, which says any federal congressional candidate who has already served three terms in the U.S. House of Representatives or two terms in the U.S. Senate can't be on the ballot in elections. Now, representatives could still run for a fourth term, and senators could still run for a third term. Their names would just have to be written in on the ballot. For people who can't spell, though, this might be a problem. Anyway, Bobby Hill, a member representing the League of Women Voters, was not happy Amendment 73 passed. She sued Arkansas, arguing the amendment went against the United States Constitution, yo. Specifically, it's Article 1, Section 2. No person shall be a representative who shall not have attained the age of 25 years and been seven years a citizen of the United States and who shall not, when elected, be an inhabitant of that state in which he shall be chosen. But wait. There's more. It's Article 1, Section 3. No person shall be a senator who shall not have attained to the age of 30 years and been nine years a citizen of the United States and who shall not, when elected, be an inhabitant of that state for which he shall be chosen. And, of course, Hill brought up the 17th Amendment as well. Ray Thornton, a U.S. congressman representing the 2nd District of Arkansas, was one of the folks who would not have his name on the ballot in the next election. He joined Hill and the League of Women Voters with another lawsuit, representing Arkansas in the lawsuit by Hill was Attorney General Winston Bryant. Representing Arkansas in the lawsuit by Thornton was U.S. Term Limits, the organization who helped get Amendment 73 to pass to begin with. The Arkansas Circuit Court sided with Thornton and Hill. On appeal, the Arkansas Supreme Court also ruled in favor of Thornton and Hill. U.S. Term Limits and Bryant appealed yet again to the Supreme Court, who agreed to hear both cases, hearing oral arguments on November 29th, 1994. U.S. term limits argue that Amendment 73 didn't actually prevent anyone from running for an additional term. She or he could run as a write-in candidate. But Thornton and Hill argued this additional obstacle was enough to overstep Article 1, Sections 2 and 3 of the U.S. Constitution. So, could states do that as an indirect way to prevent career politicians being in government? The court said no. On May 22nd, 1994, 1995, they announced they had sided with Thornton and Hill. It was a close one, five to four, and split based on political ideology. The more conservative justices sided with U.S. term limits. Justice John Paul Stevens wrote the majority opinion, using the 17th Amendment to back it up. Quote, the Congress of the United States is not a confederation of nations in which separate sovereigns are represented by appointed delegates, but is instead a body composed of representatives of the people. Writing for the dissent, Justice Clarence Thomas wrote, Wait a second, Justice Thomas? Holy crap, we never hear from that dude. Anyway, he wrote, quote, Nothing in the Constitution deprives the people of each state of the power to prescribe eligibility requirements for or the candidates who seek to represent them in Congress. In other words, this seemed like a states' rights issue for the dissent. Regardless, U.S. Term Limits, Inc. v. Thornton made it clear that if people wanted there to be term limits for members of U.S. Congress, there would have to be a constitutional amendment. And we all know how easy it is to pass those, am I right? Now, should Congress have term limits? I'm going to redirect you to Peter of the channel Professor Politics to answer that question. Go ahead, check out the video and come on right back. So, what'd you think? I can't hear you, but 82% of Americans in a recent poll said they thought members of Congress should have term limits. Texas Senator Ted Cruz and Florida Congressman Francis Rooney, hold on, let me get a better picture of Ted Cruz, that's better, recently introduced an amendment to the Constitution to restrict senators to two six-year terms and representatives to three two-year terms. And President Trump and both Democrats and Republicans have expressed support for for it. That said, that doesn't mean term limits are coming to Congress anytime soon. I'll see you for the next Supreme Court case, jury. 
What do you think? So should Congress have term limits? Let me know in the comments below. And thanks to my Patreon supporter, Casper, for suggesting this topic. I made this video because he donates at least $10 or more a month to me on Patreon. So thanks, Casper. And if you want your Supreme Court case suggestions made into a video, that's probably the quickest way to make it happen. Don't forget to check out the video by Professor Politics about why term limits may not be such a great idea. He has a great channel, so go subscribe to it too, eh? Hey, hey. Thanks for watching, Beatniks. My wife, uh, Mrs. Beat, she wants me to tell you also to check out my Instagram. I need more Instagram followers, apparently.